Well, Tommy, it's been a busy week of recruitment. It's three new faces through the door, making it a total of four so far in summer recruitment. Yeah, I think it was something that uh, when I spoke to Graham back in January, it was something he was uh, he was keen to get our business or some of our business done early or as early as we can. Of course, players haven't had a full season of football. To the guys that we, mm. we've uh, we've signed want to have a break, but everything's been sort of canned, if you like, or put put on the shelf, and now they're back from their breaks. It's been it's been a, a fruitful week. Um, so yeah, it's really really pleasing to get to get four of the guys over the line. Mm. You mentioned there were some ideas put forward in, in January just to give fans an insight. So does that mean you know that far behind you already start looking at? Some work, of the targets to, to recruit. I think I said it when I joined the club. I said I work, I work two windows ahead. You know, at yeah. the end of the day, um, such is the business these days. As so many people represent so many players, um, there seems to be an almighty rush at the end of, of uh, the season or in the, at the end of January, and people are throwing names around that you just don't have the time to go and do mm. the due diligence on. I think it's really important that. You don't just look at a player on a video, or you don't just take a recommendation off even a, a good um, compatriot in the in the in the game. Mm -hmm. You need to go in and watch them yourself. So, you know, we as a department at the football club do our due diligence. We we've done it on the guys that we we have uh, spent many hours, mm -hmm. weeks, days, and you know, in conversation both in telephones and mm -hmm. then meeting people to make sure this happens. There's got to be a, a three-way tangle when it works. It's got to be, we want to, uh, you've got to fit the profile of the manager, what he wants. Uh, we've got to reach the, an agreement with the player and his representative. Mm -hmm. And if he's at another football club, we've got to get to an agreement with that football club. So there's a lot more uh, involvement than people would probably imagine that there is. It's not me mm -hmm. just clicking through a, you know, a magazine mm -hmm. on the season and saying, oh, we like him, we like him, we'll go and try and sign him. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more to it than that. Mm -hmm. That's actually going to be my next question. Is, is, it's not quite what appears on the surface of recruitment and play. There's, there's so many fine details that need to be ironed yeah. out and, and so many different you know, objectives of it. Yeah. Like I said, the process to sign these players started way back, mm -hmm. way back when. I mean, there are obviously players that I've been aware of since before I came to Bristol Rovers. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been doing this job 13 years, um, and from that point of view, it's it's a case of keeping your um, your portfolio and your your knowledge of players, whether they've gone in and out of the game. Josh being a very good example of that in terms yeah. of he was he was in the League One team when he was 18 and had a bad injury, but uh, I think it'll come across him when you speak to him going forward in the season when people meet him. Uh, he's a confident lad and, and he's he's worked ever so hard and got back to a level I believe um, he could he could affect now again League One. So he's a great example of any youngster who's mm. fallen out of the game at any stage. Um, on his uh, In his particular case, it, it wasn't a choice thing, it was an injury thing, mm. which made him fall by the wayside for a, a little time. He's built his way back and at 23-24, hopefully his time will come again. So, yeah. Mm, it's good to get through the door and, and another right back as well that's coming, Mark Little's vast experience and played at a good level as well championship football he's got in his CV yeah I mean there's, there's a risk when you sign any player well, you know, you, uh, it's not like driving the car if you give me your car keys your car will drive for me exactly as it drives for you it doesn't know yeah. that I'm driving the car but these are, these are human beings uh, the vast majority of the people will be moving you know, location wise so they'll be relocating either their families or their, their girlfriends or you know their children that means a school there's a lot of things that, that have to you know take a little time and when when you're moving players like I said they're human and it will take a little time which is again another reason Graham and I spoke and felt it would be better to get uh, a few done before we actually went back to pre-season training and then also bolstered in the defence as well Tom Davis has come through the door as well someone that you must have known from Coventry yeah and... yeah I mean like I said uh, yeah. I was asked uh, um, the other night at the at the AGM about you know why are we signing everybody and why are all the players coming from Coventry and with all due respect, um, Coventry finished I think seventh in the league. Um, you'd have to say that they had players that were slightly better than ours. Now yeah. I would never suggest and then go through and, and and agree to sign a player for any club that I that I worked for that I didn't feel was an upgrade on what we have or had. You got to remember, we, we've we've had a, a eight or nine lads leave leave the club because of the end of their contracts, and positions have to be filled. And if the position happens to be a player that I believe to be good enough, then I'll suggest it to the manager and of course the people upstairs. And if we can get all three parties to agree, then then that'll happen. So I'd, I'd also step back and say, well, the two we signed from Coventry, I, I believe, certainly improved us in our course, yeah. in our aim to stay in the division last season. Yeah, Had definitely. we not signed them two guys. It might have been a different story, mm. but then 
it may not. So, you know, it's all it's all ha- after the event sort of situation. I'm the guy who has to put my neck on the line and say, look, I would sign him if yeah. I was in your position. And that's the way it works. So mm. I'm pleased that it's, it's, it's worked for in the in the whole this season. Yeah. Yeah. And then lastly as well, quite an interesting transfer in terms of the dynamic of it, the Dutch goalkeeper coming over. Mm. What, can you give us an idea about how this was come around, where, how he's been spotted and what he's going to bring? Yeah. Um, Again, the process started with a, an email from a, an agent to, to suggest um, I take a look at him. And so he sent me some clips. I looked at the clips myself and also the technical scouts that I have that work for me um, had a look. And we were all of the opinion it was worth to, to, to go a little further and have a, have a live look at him. So a couple of us went at different times over to, to watch the guy play. Um, and then the club that he played for got wind that there was somebody there um, and promptly whipped him out the side. So <laughs> it was a bit it was a bit of a strange one, but we, we've seen enough to, to think um, he's another one who I feel deserves an opportunity. Again, I said to you, I spoke to the manager when he, he got the job on a permanent basis in January and I asked him to give me the profiles of every position that we would need to recruit him. Yeah. In a goalkeeper, I would say, Jordi ticks an awful lot of the boxes. He's a real presence in, as a guy, as you'll see. You'll need a big camera, or you would have needed a big camera <laughs> to get him on it. Um, but you know, he, he, on the flip side of that, he hasn't played any football in England. So he's going to take time, I would imagine, to settle in. He may be a longer term project, but he's certainly one I feel could affect the first team squad from day one. So again, that, the football staff uh, will judge him and, you know, in the training sessions and stuff, but I don't think we're done in that department yet. Um, and Jordy knows that, so he's coming in knowing he's going to have to fight to try and make the position him his own. So, you know, there's, I've been, I'm a very honest guy when I do go and speak to these people. It's not my job to promise them football. It's my job to provide an opportunity for them if I feel that they're deserving of it. And, uh, and, that, and that's, that's the role I play in the situation or in the process, I should say.